Good afternoon, good evening everyone, it is David Schlothauer here in the home weather office with a very detailed update on Invest 92L as it lurks across 30 degrees west longitude and it is headed west at about 15 to 20 miles an hour. We'll break down every single bit of detail so you can stay prepared ahead of Invest 92L as it could become a tropical storm or hurricane. Now if you're new to the channel and you really like these detailed updates, please consider subscribing, hitting the like button, and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So here's a detailed look at the Atlantic Wide Satellite Imagery provided by TropicalTidbits.com at Levi Cowan. This guy is really awesome at providing the best, most detailed satellite images on a website for a lot of us to view. And so we're going to be spending the entire video talking about Invest 92L. This is going to be a very detailed update video on this because yeah there are people that live over here across the leeward islands the windward islands even puerto rico the u.s british virgin islands could get impacted by this system and we're not going to focus on this area of disturbed weather since it's not highlighted by the nhc but it does look a little bit more organized than it did yesterday so here's a look at the wide satellite imagery again um pretty calm out here and here is again that tropical wave when we look at our water vapor satellite imagery, again, what we look for here is how much moisture is in the atmosphere. So darker gray colors here on the map, you can clearly see this patch right here. That is dry air that is in the atmosphere and these tropical waves, when they come off of Africa and they ingest this drier air, that's why they don't really develop very well in the main development region this time of the year. What we're looking for here is a lot of this brighter shade of gray and white colors here uh, where that tropical wave is located. This means the air is more moist and, you know, that's more latent heat release from the Atlantic and usually gives rise to these tropical cyclones or these tropical waves that typically like to develop. So, again, we'll be talking about this dry patch of air out ahead of this and how that might impact the forecast in about seven days once this makes approach to the Leeward and Windward Islands. So looking at the National Hurricane Center, there this does have a 70% chance of tropical formation. You can see the graphic here, seven-day forecast. The area here highlighted in red um, means that this is the area that the NHC is watching for possible tropical development, maybe a tropical depression, tropical storm, or if not, a hurricane, right? So this was issued as of 2 p.m. today, Eastern Daylight Time. They're going to release a new update here within probably the next uh, 15 about the next 30 minutes maybe in the next hour or so and i'm sure that percentage will probably go up to about 80 percent so this look at the latest text discussion from the national hurricane center in miami florida a tropical wave located several hundred miles south southwest of the cabo verde islands continues to produce a broad area of disorganized showers and thunderstorms environmental conditions appear here quite conducive for additional development and a tropical depression is likely to form by the early to the middle portion of next week while the system moves westward at 15 to 20 miles an hour across the eastern and central tropical Atlantic and again you can see on uh, the next 48 hours it has a 50% chance of tropical development almost a high chance it's a medium in the short range and then a high chance 70 percent in the next seven days and buckeye has issued this forecast he's a really great forecaster i don't know him very well but i know he does a great job he or she yeah buckeye can be kind of one of those names so now let's take a look at the models numerical forecasting guidance going to be looking at the European model and we're going to be drilling really deep into this forecast because a lot of you are wondering is it going to hit the leeward islands is it going to hit the windward islands is it going to hit my area in Puerto Rico right a lot of questions about that in the last video that I made yesterday which got about 6,000 views so thank you all for sharing that video so the look here at the European model, this is initialized 12Z, so that was this morning. The European actually didn't get finished rendering in, uh, for about, about three or four hours ago. 
So we can see uh, when it has initialized, we can see that there is vorticity here. So what we're looking for here on the models, and again, kind of a learn lesson 101. A lot of you liked that um, in my last video. So I'm gonna try my best at making this even more detailed as I can, but at the same time, we gotta move on and talk about who's gonna get hit. So this will look at the geopotential height, the lines right here, this is the height contours. Okay, in decameters, and then you got your wind barbs. That's the wind that is blowing from. So this is a easterly flow at 5,000 feet. And then these colors that you see on your screen indicate vorticity, how much spin there is in the atmosphere. All right, follow me. You follow me on that. Um, trying to not to be as too, too detailed and boring, but you guys, it's a, a kind of a weather class 101 here at the same time talk about invest 92l so going forward here we can see uh with what this is actually going to do um in the next three days yep there is the footprint of a pretty intense tropical depression or tropical storm on the model we have another tropical wave coming off of africa this one back here probably won't do much because there's a little bit more drier air and shear to work with uh, because the outflow on the back side of this but nevertheless, yeah, it's a tropical wave, but the big instigator will be the one out in front. That is a pretty strong signature at 5,000 feet of vorticity, which means a spin, lots of rotation going on. Now going out to day four, yeah, that spin does definitely get deeper. Um, dark reds on the screen, a indication that rotation and vorticity is strong. Here is the outline of your ridge. That is at the 5,000 foot level. More on that in the next tab. And then going forward here, day five. Yeah, it's still in striking distance for some of the islands here. Even if you don't get some hurricane force winds or tropical storm force winds, you might get tropical depression force. And yeah, you could see some squally weather, heavy rain, strong winds, maybe some storm surge and flooding on some of these islands. Okay, so just because it's weakening uh, possibly on the approach to the islands don't underestimate this that's a, what a lot of uh, folks do uh, they underestimate these and like well it's not going to be a big deal it's weakening heck with it because moisture and rain follow well behind these systems if they're sheared you may not get a whole lot on the front quadrant which is the direction of motion so that would be this area here but a lot of the moisture could fall on the back side of these systems so just keep that in mind when you're planning your friday out by the end of this coming week here for june 23rd that yeah it, it could be interesting okay and then that really falls apart um quite a bit the signature there is not as quite is not as significant as it is when it's on the approach and that tropical wave here's another one right here fairly weak in nature and it looks like the euro is not too excited about any more waves coming off of africa there now as you know i'm not going to move maps over to the bahamas because there's very little chance it makes its way over there so now another product that i like to use here now we're going to combine all three this is the cyclonic vorticity at 5,000 feet. We're looking at the 500 millibar, so our steering flow, and our 200 millibar steering flow, because we want to know what's going to steer this generally westward, right? Why is it going to hit the islands, you might ask? Well, players of the game are as such. We got this 500 millibar ridge in place, okay? That's the heights that you see here. Hurricanes or tropical cyclones cannot barrel through ridges very easily because the air mass is thicker, the th lines of thicknesses, right? It's kind of like a big bubble of warm, dense air, right? And it's drier generally. So cyclones don't like that very much. All right, so going uh, out to day three, this ridge is pretty much like it is here. That's why the system is likely to move generally in this general direction. We have a nice good outflow at 200 millibars, so a signature of a fairly um, impressive cyclone here on the model. And then going out to day four, day five, yeah, that's pretty strong right there. And again, the general steering flow here is, again, it's going to be this ridge that's in place like so. And now, even so, the ridge is somewhat weaker here. It's also building in on the back side of the cyclone, so that's going to actually help push this right along quite nicely and 700 millibar ridge 2 is going to also build in 
So once it gets past here, you know, it's going to find itself uh, with more shear that's going to increase coming more out of the north as you can see here by the wind barbs the trough also here is going to help to shunt some of that shear in from the southerly direction so uh, not as good of a, an environment in the the caribbean here but out ahead of time or out ahead of, before it hits the islands environment should be pretty favorable for troughal formation so now that we talked about the European model and all of its graphics, why not? Let's take a look at the GFS model, 850 millibar uh, geopotential height and cyclonic vorticity. So we can see here the system really wraps up pretty um, quickly. This could be a very strong system on the GFS. I mean, possibly a strong hurricane. That's what some YouTubers have been mentioning. I don't think we'll get there, but it's going to be a very strong, very compact cyclone. And you know, compact cyclones, they could spin up very quickly than, say, broader ones in nature. Again, same steering flow, ridge to the north, going to help steer this thing generally westward for the next several days. Uh, and the thing about the GFS is it thinks the system is going to be much stronger than the European model. So it wants to make it gain more latitude faster. And so on this particular model run, the 18Z run, there is no threat to the islands. Now, what I just said, folks, do not take that seriously, please. Because the last thing we want to, uh, me to tell you is, oh, yeah, don't take precautions and all and then oh okay it's gonna hit us all right never mind right this the gfs model could be one over sampling things and it tends to do that a stronger system in this case in the main development region will likely move more poleward so it's going to gain latitude more quicker right because the vortex is stronger the coriolis effect allows that to happen so, but the thing is, if the vortex is weaker and less sh or more shallower, it's not going to gain latitude as quickly, allowing a track more like with what the European model is showing. By the way, watching this tropical wave back here and another one coming off of Africa on the GFS. I mean, the GFS is going pretty crazy with this. And you can see the ending result. It wants to parallel around a cutoff flow up here in the upper levels. And the system is able to kind of turn out to see safely away from Bermuda. But again, we cannot hope for the best, folks. This is the best case scenario is that it does miss the islands over here. But again, we can't guarantee that, okay? If we actually go back here and look at previous models, we can see there is some moving around here, some waffling around. Sometimes it's over here, and then you can see. And the trend overall has been generally southward, so we'll see if that trend does continue. We do have a little bit of help today on our ensemble forecasts. Let me actually zoom in on this so you all can actually see it. So this is the GEFS model, and yeah, yeah, there's a plenty full of members that do bring this pretty close to some of the islands here of, say, the U.S. British Virgin Islands, including some of the islands there. Of, uh, if you are on, say, um, Dominica and some of the islands to the north, just be aware, yeah, there's plenty full of members here. Just one forecast here does not mean you're saved. It's not a saving grace model, right? Just understand that here is that's why we use these ensembles uh, to get a better picture. Remember the GFS, the, the, the deterministic forecast kind of showed a track more like this. That the problem here is, yeah, you got more members on your left side of the guidance than on your right side. So the control run, what I'm telling you, cannot be a safe predicted bet at the moment. Now, another clue that we got here is some more models. These are the hurricane operational models. And we can see, uh, again, still in striking distance, folks, just because, again, the GFS is away from the islands. It's one model in several members. It's like, um, I'm going to use some of my friends that I work with, actually. I'm going to use Josiah, and I'm going to use um, Terrell for an example. Terrell thinks that it might hit the islands, while Josiah thinks maybe it's not going to hit the islands very much, right? Or it's going to miss the islands. There are two different people here predicting two different scenarios, right? Based on, is it going to be strong? 
If it strengthens faster rather than later, maybe it does gain more latitude than say if it's shallower vortex, strengthens later on, it hits the islands. That's the scenario that we're looking at right now. The steering flow to the north is pretty well set at this time. With the deep layer ridge to the north, system's going to be able to move generally westward at 15 to 20 miles an hour. Now another question is how strong will this get? We saw the environment with some drier air that might lurk ahead of this, Some sh um, also some shear too. Uh, I don't think that's going to be as much of an inhibiting factor until it gets into the Caribbean. So at this point, uh, the next five days, maybe the next six or so days may not matter too much. This is going to likely strengthen into tropical storm um, category or kind of thresholds by the time we go into the day three and four time frame. Now, as always, I'm very generous with my forecasts, and I do predict um, on a lower end of the scale here, with some of the models indicating a Cat 1, a Cat 2, even some YouTubers are already sniffing out and hitting the panic button, the hype button, saying that this is going to become a major hurricane. I would really not jump the gun on that right now, and I would be very careful on who you watch. Right now, my intensity forecast is going to be pretty generous, and I am calling for this to become a 75-mile-an-hour hurricane. Again, not a Category 2 or a Category 3. I'm going to hold it kind of safe right now with a max speed of 70 to 75 miles an hour. So a high-end tropical storm or a low-end Category 1 hurricane at the very lowest at the moment. But again, this could bounce all over the place as with what all intensity forecast d does show. Again, we got plenty here. Low end tropical storm to a low end, mid end cat two, even a high end or a mid end cat three. So big ceiling on this. We'll see um, how this evolves over the next couple of days. Also, another thing to note is upper ocean heat content is pretty significant this early in the Atlantic hurricane season in such a way we don't typically see this much of upper ocean heat content until late August through mid-September. Yeah, I hope you all understand that. This is quite a bit of heat energy being stored in the water, and it's only going to get warmer and warmer as we go through July and August. Well, rest of June into August and September. So you can see a lot of upper ocean heat content being stored, ready to go for the season ahead, not just the Invest 92L, but others behind it later on in the season. This would be a really big deal, and it's gonna mean a lot by the time we go into, say, August and September. Typically, our peak hurricane months really doesn't begin until the last half of August into September. Sea surface temperature anomalies definitely above average, anywhere between two and four Celsius above the long-term average, which is pretty significant. Sea surface temperatures actually right now ranging between 27 to as much as 30 Celsius in portions of the Caribbean as well as the Bahamas with sea surface temperatures in the main development region ranging between 27 to 28 Celsius. So definitely, definitely warm. There is sea surface temperatures are ready to go for Invest 92L. It's all going to be about what happens above the surface of the ocean any dry air, any shear that gets in the way that can prevent this thing from strengthening because this will matter a lot. If we can see a strong storm in J June, imagining what we might see in July, August, and even in September especially. Well, that's going to sum it up for today's video. If you did enjoy the detailed discussion on Invest 92L, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Make sure all notifications are turned on because I will keep you all updated on this disturbance as it remains a possible threat to the islands. Also, leave a, a comment and also, again, um, sh just go crazy. Share this, like it, and subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your Saturday.